Praise God. Greetings to all in the matchless name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Today I would like to uh, take your attention to a portion, a verse in the Psalms. Psalms 69 verse 5 and 6. It says, O God, you know my foolishness and my sins are not hidden from you. Let not those who wait for you, O Lord, God of hosts, be ashamed because of me. Let not those who seek you be confounded because of me, O God of Israel. You know, what touched me when I read this verse is, it says, Lord, the psalmist is crying out to God, Lord, let not those who look to you be ashamed because of me, and let not those who seek you be confounded because of me. You know, the word confounded, it means confused, perplexed, not able to understand the situation or why certain things are happening. I would like to take you to two incidents in the Bible where we see two people who by their acts, uh, one person by his act brought shame and death to his people and shame to his nation, while another person by her act was able to rescue her people and bring them joy. So let's look at the first person. Uh, if we turn to Joshua chapter 7, uh, let me explain what's happening there. When we look in the, uh, read the chapter, we'll see the Israelites are in, a, in the conquest of the promised land. So they have crossed the river Jordan. They had their first mighty victory at the city of Jericho, and they are going to attack a smaller city, Ai. But what happens here is they lose the battle. And as we read in verse 6, we see that Joshua fell on the earth with his face down in front of the ark of the Lord and is crying out to God, not understanding why that happened. We can see God is telling Joshua, don't lie there, don't be sad, get up. The reason why you lost the battle is because there's sin in the lives of the people. In, in midst of you, there's sin. When we look at verse uh, 11 and 12, we can see God is saying the children of Israel could not stand before the enemies because of sin in their midst. And even God is telling Joshua, unless you take that away from the midst of you, I'm not going to be with you and you're going to lose all the battle. So God is telling him, sanctify the people and bring them all together tomorrow and I'll bring forward the guilty. We see Achan, a person, Achan the son of Kami. When we read verse 1, of the uh, Joshua chapter 7 we can see that what he did was he took something from the city of Jericho after they had conquered it and he uh, he hid it in his tent we see in the previous chapter God is telling his lights do not take anything from the city of Jericho because that will bring a curse upon you when Achan was asked why did he do it in Joshua chapter 7 verse 21, we can see him saying, When I saw the spoils, a beautiful Babylonian garment, 200 shekels of silver and wedge of gold, he's saying, I saw it, I coveted it. You know, he gave into his de desire, into his covetousness, and he took it, even though he knew he, what he was doing is wrong. Now let's look at the other person. We can see this person in chapter Joshua chapter 2. The Let me give you a background of what's happening there. We see Joshua, the leader, sending two spies to spy the city of Jericho. And these two spies reach the house of Rahab, the harlot. What she does is, she protects them when the king of Jericho knows about this. He sends people to arrest the spies. And what she does is she hides them and protects them. But in turn, she says, I protected you. You need to protect my people when you take over the city. Why was she so confident that they're going to take the city over? Now, we've, if you we look at verse 10 and 11, we can see what Rahab is saying to the spies. She said, if you read that, For we have heard how the Lord dried up the water of Red Sea for you, when you came out of Egypt and what you did to the two kings of the Amorites who were on the other side of Jordan, Sihon and Og, 
whom you utterly destroyed. And as soon as we heard these things, our hearts melted. Neither did there remain any more courage in anyone because of you. For the Lord your God, he is God in heaven above and on earth beneath. Amen. You know, she realized who the God of Israel was. And re what really touched my heart is the, the last part where she is saying, The Lord your God, he is God in heaven above and on earth below, beneath. You know, she understood that God, the God of Israel, was the Almighty God and she trusted him. And because of that, she was able to save her people. Uh, we can see jo um, the spies agreed and when they are destroying the city of Jericho, Joshua is telling the spies to bring her out and her family were in, uh, in her house. What kind of person are we? Are we Achan who gives into the desires of our eyes, of our heart, our flesh, fleshly lust, our desires and sin against God when we, even when we know it's wrong to do it? Or like Rahab, who trusted in a God. When we look at both of them, Achan is an Israelite. He is a chosen treasure. We, about Israelites, God says, they are. he has chosen them as a treasure. He has set them apart. He's a person who knows all the commandments of God. But when you look at Rahab, she's a Gentile. She doesn't know God pro like, uh, in, like how Achan knows, but she has heard about him and she trusted. She understood that he's almighty God. Dear children of God, it's easy, it's very easy to give in to our desires of fleshly lust, of our pleasure, you know, give in to our covetousness and sin against God. We know in the Bible it says, the wages of sin is death. Let us consider, be careful in every choices, decisions we make, the words we talk, the actions we do, the things we do, let us make sure that that is not something that is leading us to death or bringing our, us and our family under a curse. Because when we disobey God, it doesn't affect only us, it affects everyone around us. You know, because of Agon, his whole family, what happened to them? The Israelites, God told the Israelites, take them to the valley of Agor. They were stoned and burned to death everything, all that they owned, all the families, all Akin's family. Let me end this with one word. As it says in uh, Psalm 69, verse 5 and 6, O oh God, you know my foolishness. My sins are not hidden from you. You know, God knows us. God knows when what kind of sins we are prone to. And let this be a daily cry of our heart. God, let not those who seek you be ashamed or let not those you who know you be ashamed or confounded because of me. Let God bless all of us with his words. Thank you.